Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, CaltonCutlery.com. We have got, it's that time of the year where the sun is really low and as it comes across in the afternoon it shines just right inside, uh, you know, my two windows, which is really nice for the, um, you know, the sunlight and, uh, you know, brightening your mood and everything, but it's, it's kind of a little on the tough side to shoot videos in the afternoon. So I got a, a dog food box up here, kind of, kind of blocking the window, but some of the light is still coming through. Okay, so today what we're going to do is we are going to go over a horizontal um, uh, carry option for the neck knives with the Kydex sheaths. Okay, so you guys, <coughs> one of my last videos was uh, over uh, making the belt loop for the Kydex neck the Kydex uh, neck knife style sheaths, okay? I have been playing around trying to find a clip version that I like, um, you know, and not really having a whole lot of success. I mean, I've, I found some nice clips out there. Um, they work nice and everything, but they're just not, um, honestly, they're just not really what I'm after. Um, I've been carrying a neck knife with a simple paracord uh, belt loop now for five six years something like that and honestly I have not found anything better than just paracord run through the the hollow rivets for a belt loop um, <coughs> um, you know it's it's flat you take something well it's uh, about the same size so I mean, it, it just, it doesn't hardly add any width at all to the sheath versus a belt loop or a belt clip. I mean, this is a real nice belt clip, don't get me wrong. I mean, one of the better ones that I've seen, but it still adds a whole lot of width to the, to the overall knife and sheath package. Something like this, honestly, is what I'm carrying right now. You know, it's a, it's a vertical style uh, carry, edge back. Uh, spine forward and nice and flat up against my my belly one of the biggest advantages of that I mean besides it being um, you know very inexpensive very customizable um, you know and just handy is that it lays so flat okay um, you know I mean I try to I mean I'm not quite as active as what I used to be but I still try to stay you know pretty active so just standing here, you wouldn't really notice the difference, you know, between, you know, the belt clip and a, a, you know, a nice flat design like this. When you really start noticing the difference is when you get out and you start working. When I'm crawling around up underneath that truck, you know, changing out the starter on it, or helping my boy swap the engine in his bug for the gazillionth time or whatever, and you go and you roll on the pavement, okay, the flatter the knife package is, the less it gets shoved up in your side, okay? So something like this that's nice and thin and kind of wide, okay, as you press on it, it doesn't really cause any discomfort, okay? You take something with a clip like this and all that surface area from here is getting concentrated around that clip and it gets smashed into your side like that. You'll only roll over on it two or three times before you'll either rethink about rolling on that side <coughs> or you'll take it off before you start doing work. <coughs> when you're doing work is typically when you need that knife with you. Okay, maybe not rolling her up, up around the, the, the truck or the car, but, you know, maybe let's say you're, you know, you're up, up underneath a mobile home, you got a water leak, it's the middle of winter, and you're up underneath there, and you got to cut the insulation to be able to find out where the broken pipe is to be able to fix it. And you're laying, and you're rolling around up underneath there, and, you know, I mean, something like that, digging into your side the whole time, that gets really uncomfortable in a hurry. If you're up in an attic, you know, installing a new attic mount furnace in something or, you know, trying to find, uh, you know, a, a, a wire pulled out or you're running a new wiring or you're running a new, you know, furnace ducting or, or something like that. Anytime where you're, you're crawling, you're laying, you're rolling, anything like that, the flatter you can get your pack, your, the flatter you can get the knife sheath package 
on your hip, the better. Okay. Now, on the other hand, I have not once had one of these neck cords wear out or loosen up on me. Okay. Each one of these I carried for over a year, testing out. This one right here is the prototype of the 440C stainless neckers. Carried that for a year, dressed out two or three antelope. I don't know how many uh, cottontails. Um, you know, I don't know how many projects I did with that particular knife. So, you know, it's not like it's, you know, I was just standing up the whole time I was wearing that. This one right here was um, one of the first um, pattern welded steel neckers that I made. And I carried that for over a year, you know, long term testing the edge and the steel and all that kind of stuff. And that knife right there, or that sheath, you can tell it's been through the ringer also. <coughs> now, <coughs> Boy, let me tell you, it's all this talking. Now, like I said, I carry uh, handle up, uh, edge back on my right hand side, okay, because I'm right handed. This is a very, for me and my lifestyle, um, you know, my clothing options, all that kind of stuff, this is a very comfortable way for me to carry, um, you know, very uh, uh, convenient comfortable um you know i mean it's just just what i'm used to other fellas might not like you know uh, a nice high rise carry like that on the strong side <clears throat> i had a customer the other day that requested a horizontal style carry and i thought about it for a little bit and i kind of played around the shop and i came up with something that's pretty dang close to um well pretty dang close i mean it, it works pretty good I'm not a big fan of that method of carry, <clears throat> but, um, you know, if you spend most of your time seated or if you have, you know, shoulder or elbow problems or something where you can't, I mean, because if you look, when I go to draw that knife, I mean, my arm comes up quite a bit and then to clear that knife, see how high my elbow's got to get to clear the point of the sheath or the, the point of the knife from the sheath, you know, to be able to use it. If you've got, you know, shoulder, back, arm problems, whatever, you know, where that method of carry is not comfortable for you, then you need to find something different. So what this is, is <coughs> it still maintains the, um, the stripped paracord for the, uh, the loops, okay? Now the way you tie this depends on which way you want to carry it, okay? <clears throat> I tested this one out as a carry, I guess you would call this appendix carry with a knife. Um, I know with a pistol, if you carry it over here, that's kind of a cross draw. Um, and if you carry it, you know, here, that would be considered a behind the back, you know, either hand, either way. And so if you carry it here, I guess that would be considered an appendix carry. And pretty much uh, the way I uh, set this up was edge down point to the left, butt to the right, and then it fits pretty much in between your belt buckle and the belt buckle and the first uh, belt loop of your jeans, okay? Um, <clears throat> I guess I can throw that on right quick and then you can kind of see how it works. And then I'll show you how to tie it. So your belt goes through that loop goes through the second loop now you want this to be uh, a fairly snug fit okay because um, you don't want it being floppy on there okay you want it to have a little bit of movement but you definitely want it to move with the belt you don't want it uh, you know being loose and floppy So, the way this is carried, now, you know, different people are built differently and everything. Um, I don't think I have very, you know, wide, you know, I wear a 36 or a 38 uh, size jean here. So, there's not a whole lot of flat space in between here and here to be able to carry a, a long knife. So, this necker, <coughs> this necker I think is about as long as I would want. Uh, a full size EDC. I think it would stick out, the butt would stick out here and then it would get in the way, 
you know, of reaching into my, my pants pocket. But it holds there, knife pops out, knife pops back in. It's discreet if you want it to be discreet, which, you know, is kind of a handy deal. You know, not everybody is a knife person, and some people get uncomfortable when they see a fixed blade knife on somebody out in public. But, you know, it works pretty good. It's secure. You know, it's not going to go anywhere, and it moves with me. <laughs> okay, that's enough looking at my belly. Now I'll show you how to tie the thing. <clears throat> okay, so the way the, uh, the sheaths come... Of course, I got the knots kind of tight on here. Okay, so that right there is going to be, uh, yeah. So this is this is the point, and this is the um, the back. Okay, so the way these sheaths typically come is that you know I've got my little safety feature put in there, and the net cord runs through the side. like that okay that way you can you know hang it on your neck use the thing put it up but they've all got these hollow rivets in here okay um, and those hollow rivets work really great for stuff like this so decide which way you want to carry it so <clears throat> in the carry method that we just had I want edge down and I want <clears throat> this side against my body and this side away from it, okay? So where I want the belt loop to go, this is for an inch and a half uh, wide belt, which I think is most, uh, you know, working man belts. So you'll want the belt loop on that side, so you put it on that side. Now, bring it up. And go through like that, okay? Now, you could go ahead and tie this right here, but then if you did that, then your belt would constantly be hitting a, a knot right there. So, what you should, what I do is I take and I wrap it over this away. Okay? So that the belt loop, you know, the, the knot side is on this side from the belt loop. Okay? That way, the belt loop would have to ride up and over this to be able to kind of come off this side. See what I mean? So the way you, you lash that, it kind of keeps this belt loop in place so that it can't really shift a whole lot. If you were to do it the other way, if you were to do it like that, Depends on how loose you have your, your loop here. See, that can, it can kind of almost come down and maybe start kind of coming off the end. Okay, and that wouldn't be such a good thing. So, make your lashing to where to where it stops that belt loop from going anywhere. Okay, and then just simply tying over a square knot on the back. So, now this will probably be backwards for you, but I'm not too sure I can tie a, a reverse square knot. So you take your right, put it over your left, under your left, okay, pull it tight. Then the left would go over the right, under the right, and then this is the tricky part. You try to hold that kind of still with one fingertip and then suck it down, okay? Now once you have the knot, Kind of get a finger in there and kind of cinch it to kind of tighten it up, and that's your belt loop. Okay, if you wanted to do, if you wanted to turn it around, uh, actually, let me go ahead and tie this one back. No, we'll leave that one open. If you wanted it to, <clears throat> if you're a lefty and you wanted to do the appendix carry on the left side, you would just, you know, tie this, uh, this loop on the other side so that that's where your belt loop is. Okay, now, like I said, this is for an inch and a half wide belt. That's the width of belt that I wear, and so that's 
pretty much the width of belt that I set all my knives up for. Um, inch and a half is, uh, you know, it goes through belt loops on a pair of jeans pretty easy. I think you could probably get an inch and three quarter uh, wide belt through belt loops on a, a pair of jeans, but I don't think you're going to get a two inch belt through the belt loops. Inch and, a wide, inch and a half wide belt is just kind of a, you know, a fairly common size belt for normal working man type clothes. Now, if you're wearing dress clothes, um, I think my dress belt, um, for when I do actually dress up, which is not very often, uh, I think I dressed up, I think I wore that belt three times last year, and two of them were for funerals. So that kind of tells you how often I dress up. <clears throat> so if you're running an inch, inch, inch or inch and a quarter belt, okay, now if you have, you know, that inch and a half wide belt, which is what this, this ruler is, you know, that gives you a pretty nice fit, okay? If you were to put an inch and a quarter belt in here, which is what my sanding stick is, there'd be an awful lot more slop, okay? And then it would, it would move around and it would be uncomfortable because it wouldn't stay in the same spot, all right? So you need to tie your, your knot a little bit different. The way you do that is if you were going to do it on that same side, you know, so the carry like, you know, the appendix carry right hand like that. When you, uh, when you cut your, your paracord and then you strip it, when you melt the ends, kind of melt them into a point. And that'll make that a whole lot easier to go through your, your rivets, okay? So if I was using an inch and a half, or a, a inch and a quarter or an inch belt, I would just go through the end here, okay? Then you could do the same thing. You could tie it back over on top of itself. And then when you put the, well, let's go ahead and do that. So you could tie it back over itself and then you could kind of deal with just that knot kind of being in the way. More than likely it would, uh, well with dress clothes they're kind of thin, that might be kind of uncomfortable. But you could put, ah, come on. You know, then your belt would go back through both knots. Or you could bring it around and tighten it on the other side of it. And then just tie it, um, you know, so just run it through and then just tie it on the other side if that's what you wanted. Um, honestly, like I said, I don't wear uh, dress clothes often enough to, uh, to really worry about it, but Now, if you were going to carry like this all the time, you might want to cut your, your pieces of cord a little bit shorter. Um, these shorter pieces of cord don't uh, typically come with these neck knives. Um, you'd either have to get your own or cut the neck cord. Or when you, uh, when you purchased one, just put a note in the, the uh, purchase uh, notes, you know, that you want some extra paracord to make some, some belt loops like this, and I'll cut off a piece and, and toss it in there for you. But anyway, um, we're going to go ahead and tie that back the other way while I'm thinking about it. Um, but anyways, this is, um, like I said, this isn't really my, my preferred method of carry. And so um, <clears throat> pretty much what I did was I, I took this knife and I played around with it for oh, three or four days. Uh, came up with different methods of, of tying the cord and everything until I came up with this one and, and that was pretty much, uh, you know, it worked. I carried it around again. Once I came up with uh, uh, the method here, I carried the same knife for oh, <coughs> two or three days and it was handy enough. Um, <coughs> you know, that, that spot right there, um, it was, you know, quite a bit easier to get to. Um, 
to get the knife in and out of the sheath and everything. It's just, uh, like I said, not really, um, you know, my preferred method of carry. Um, but like I said, if you have shoulder problems or if you sit down most of the time, one thing I will suggest if you are going to carry like that, well, if you're going to carry anyway, <clears throat> is practice, okay? Practice pulling the knife out and putting the knife back in, pulling it out, putting it back in, maybe even tape the edge up or something, okay? But practice, 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 and practice... Um, Start off practicing when you're fresh, you know, after you've had your coffee, all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, once you start practicing more and more and start getting more and more comfortable, then start practicing when you're a little bit tired, okay? Because the last thing you need to do, especially in a method of carry like this, either here or over here, is pull that knife out and then go back to resheath it and end up sticking yourself. You know, that would be kind of a bad idea and there's a whole lot of important stuff right around here that you really shouldn't be poking holes in. Um, but, you know, I mean, what you can do is, um, what I noticed when I was carrying it was with the smaller knife, you can kind of choke up on it. Okay, see how, so that's a normal cutting grip, right? Shift your middle finger up to that hole and then get your, uh, your finger up towards the point. Now, index off of your finger, okay? So, bring your finger up, now you can feel the, uh, feel the opening there with the side of your finger, set that point in, and then ease it in like that, okay? Bring it up, feel it with your index finger, get the point in there, and then sheath it home, okay? Make sure that you practice a controlled method like that, so that you're not just you know, trying to jam it in and then you miss and like I said, you poke a hole in, in something important because that would be kind of a bad idea. So, um, if the horizontal carry is, is your deal, that's, that's a pretty good way to do it. Like I said, this would work for appendix carry, cross draw carry, um, behind the back carry. You know, if you wanted to open it up like that or edge up, if you wanted to reach down like that. Uh, right or left, either way. Um, so, again, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you next time.